Stimulants. Stimulants hijack the nervous system. Caffeine, amphetamines, ephedrine. They flood the body with adrenaline, sharpen focus, reduce fatigue, and make pain feel distant. In the 1960s, Tour de France cyclists called them La Bamba. They'd pop them mid-race, transform into machines, and sometimes die before reaching the finish line. These drugs make the heart beat harder, faster, longer. But when the effects wear off, the crash can be brutal. Long-term use leads to addiction, paranoia, hallucinations, and in some cases, permanent heart damage. College athletes, Olympic sprinters, even students prepping for exams, stimulants became the go-to shortcut. But what starts as a performance boost often ends in physical and psychological burnout. Anabolic steroids. Anabolic steroids are artificial testosterone. Originally developed to treat muscle-wasting diseases, they found a second life in locker rooms. Used consistently, they enhance muscle protein synthesis, increase strength, and drastically reduce recovery time. In powerlifting bodybuilders, football players, they became almost unavoidable. But the side effects are devastating. Testicles shrink, acne explodes, hair falls out. In women, voices deepen and facial hair grows. In men, rage spirals out of control. The East German Olympic program in the 1980s doped thousands of athletes, many without their consent. Gold medals were won. Lifelong damage was done. Some developed heart disease in their 30s. Others were left infertile. And some committed suicide, unable to handle the hormonal chaos that followed when the drug stopped. Erythropoietin, EPO. Erythropoietin, or EPO, is a hormone that tells bone marrow to make more red blood cells. That means more oxygen delivered to muscles and endurance levels that shouldn't be possible. Endurance athletes embraced it. Cyclists, marathoners, biathletes. It made them unstoppable, and it made them vulnerable. Several cyclists in the 1990s were found dead in their beds, hearts giving out from blood that had turned into sludge. Lance Armstrong used it for years, beating hundreds of tests before the truth came out. Seven Tour de France titles erased. It wasn't just about cheating, it was about survival. If your competitors were doping, you either joined them or fell behind. EPO transformed endurance sports into high-stakes blood chemistry. Human growth hormone, HGH. HGH is the body's master repair hormone. It helps regenerate tissue, build lean muscle, and reduce fat. Athletes turn to it not for raw power, but for recovery. A torn ligament? HGH. A brutal season? HGH. Hollywood actors took it too, to rebuild their bodies for roles. Wrestlers used it to bounce back after brutal injuries. The catch is, results are subtle. It won't make you a monster overnight, but it accelerates healing. It makes age hurt less. That subtlety made it harder to ban. But the risks are severe. Joint swelling, diabetes, possible links to cancer. The body may stop producing its own hormone, creating lifelong dependency. And when HGH is mixed with steroids or insulin, the effects and risks amplify fast. Beta blockers. In sports where calm beats chaos, beta blockers reign. These drugs slow heart rate, reduce anxiety, and eliminate tremors. Archery, shooting, darts, golf, even classical musicians use them to calm their nerves before a performance. Olympic pistol shooting once had a scandal where nearly half the finalists were suspected of using them, but performance at what cost? Dizziness, depression, cold extremities. A slowed heart can mean slowed reflexes, and in the wrong moment, that can be fatal. In judged sports, they're banned, but in the gray zones, they remain a quiet tool in high-stress precision games where just one heartbeat can change the outcome. Diuretics. Diuretics make you pee, that's it. But in doping, they serve two purposes, rapid weight loss and masking other drugs. Fighters, wrestlers, bodybuilders, anyone in weight classes uses them to make weight. It's common to lose 10 to 15 pounds in a single day. The results? Dehydration so extreme it can shut down kidneys. Boxers have died from cutting water weight too aggressively. Others use diuretics to flush out banned substances before a drug test, but testing labs caught on. Diuretics themselves became banned. And there's another danger, electrolyte imbalance. When you flush everything out, sodium, potassium, magnesium, you're not just dehydrated, you're unstable. Heart rhythms fail, muscles cramp, and you might collapse before the competition even starts. Peptide hormones. Peptides are tiny chains of amino acids that act like chemical messengers. Some stimulate natural HGH. Others mimic insulin-like growth factor, IGF-1, promoting cell growth and repair. They're popular because they're hard to detect. Some aren't even listed substances yet. And unlike full-on steroids, peptides feel cleaner. They're new, experimental, a biotech edge. Bodybuilders and sprinters have used them to add lean muscle and drop fat fast. But unknown doesn't mean safe. 
Long-term risks are unclear. Tumor growth? Organ stress? Unregulated peptide suppliers have been caught selling contaminated or mislabeled vials. Athletes are becoming test subjects for science that hasn't caught up with itself, and the price for that gamble could be cancer. SARMs. SARMs, selective androgen receptor modulators, sound like sci-fi. They promise the muscle-building power of steroids without the nasty side effects. No liver toxicity, no hormone crashes, no testicle shrinkage. That's the sales pitch. And early users swore by them. Lean muscle, faster cuts, clean gains. They became massively popular in MMA, CrossFit, and even Hollywood. But research tells a different story. SARMs mess with hormones, suppress natural testosterone, alter lipid levels, increase liver enzymes, and most of them haven't even passed human trials. They're marketed as supplements, but banned by every major anti-doping agency. Nootropics. Performance isn't just physical. Nootropics are cognitive enhancers, used to improve memory, focus, and reaction time. Esports players, chess grandmasters, even F1 drivers. The most popular? Modafinil. Originally for narcolepsy, now used for laser-sharp attention. Others stack caffeine with L-theanine to boost alertness without jitters. Some use race tams, others microdose LSD or psilocybin to stimulate creative thinking. But the brain isn't a machine. Push it too far, and it pushes back. Side effects include insomnia, anxiety, headaches, and dependency. And when combined with stimulants, the risk of heart palpitations or psychosis increases. The mind becomes faster, yes, but not always clearer, and certainly not safer. Gene doping. Gene doping sounds like science fiction, but it's already here. The idea is simple. Don't inject drugs. Rewire the DNA. Introduce genes that stimulate muscle growth, red blood cell production, or pain tolerance. In mice, scientists have created super rats with double muscle mass. In 2008, the World Anti-Doping Agency declared it a future threat. By 2015, studies showed it was no longer hypothetical. Athletes could alter their genetic code with CRISPR or use viral vectors to implant enhanced genes into muscle tissue. There's no reliable test, no metabolite trail, and once inside, it's part of you. It's not just cheating, it's irreversible self-modification. Natural enhancers. Not all enhancers are banned. Creatine, caffeine, nitrates from beetroot, ashwagandha, rhodiola. These are legal, over-the-counter, and found in every gym bag. Creatine increases water retention in muscles and helps with short bursts of power. Beet juice can dilate blood vessels for better oxygen flow. Ashwagandha is used to reduce cortisol. Rhodiola boosts endurance and reduces perceived exertion. These are real effects, but often overstated, and overuse can still be harmful. Too much caffeine causes heart palpitations. Some pre-workouts contain stimulant cocktails banned in other countries. Liver damage, kidney strain, and anxiety are possible even from natural stacks. Supplements aren't regulated like medications. What's on the label might not match what's in the scoop. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe for similar ones and feel free to drop suggestions for the next video in the comments.